So we're, we're having a little fun here with peas and carrots. Peas and carrots. Say it fast, and it sounds like one word. Peas and carrots. Old friends that, that have been on many dates, dressed up a little differently this time. New York City chef Wiley Dufresne loves those classic matchups, even if his restaurant, WD50, is all about turning them inside out and upside down. Here, we've taken little carrot Parisian little balls that we've blanched in carrot juice, and then we've rolled them in freeze-dried pea powder. So those aren't peas, those are carrots. These are carrots. So we call this dish peas and carrots, but it's actually sort of carrots in peas. Huh. Why do these pairings exist? Some of it is, is a function of culture and geography. They're old friends, they're flavors, they're ideas that have been together for a long time. Milk and cookies, bread and butter. Lamb and mint. Instead of the usual lamb and mint jelly, Wiley Dufresne uses candy canes. In, in here, we have some crushed up candy canes, a little bit of fried rosemary, and some Japanese breadcrumbs, and we've just toasted it all together. Pinch of salt. You'll see there's textures, temperatures, there's creamy, there's crunchy, um, bitter, um, a little bit of sweet from the candy. It's about establishing some, your, your mouth likes things to be in balance. You like There's actually balance. science yeah. to prove it, which you may be surprised to discover can be demonstrated yes. in one cheese stick with fried onions. Yes. No with a Philadelphia cheesesteak yes, from the food truck parked outside the Monell Chemical Senses Center in where else? Philadelphia. Astringency is defined as a dry, drawing, puckery sensation. Marsha Levin Pelshaw is a sensory scientist at Monell. She can tell you why something astringent, like red wine, goes so well with something high in fat, say, a cheesesteak. The fat should be coating my palate, and if after taking another bite of this, I go right back to the wine, the wine should seem less bitter and less astringent. And the cheesesteak, less fatty. In other words, the kind of balanced pairing your mouth likes. The idea mm. that each bite or sip influences the next one. That brings out the sweetness. Yes. Is called taste adaptation. Consider that dynamic duo, cookies and milk. It's a good combination, right? But what about cookies and orange juice? It's sour. You've adapted to the sugar in the cookie, and so the sourness is revealed and the sweetness is suppressed. A bad pairing. There's the Elvis. And now for an odd pairing. You decide whether it's bad or good. New York Times book reviewer Dwight Garner's favorite sandwich. Not peanut butter and jelly. No, peanut butter and pickles. At an aptly named New York restaurant, it's called The Pregnant Lady. The pickle is a sort of nice, almost sardonic um, change from the, from the jelly. Um, it, it meets the stoicness of the peanut butter in this great sort of ironic way. I've never heard stoic used in that context before, <laughs> frankly. Um, Garner's recent article about PB and P caused a minor sensation. That's it, me first? You first. This looks quite nice. There's a nice, healthy row of pickle in there. Well? Humble yet profound. <laughs> <laughs> but unlikely to replace peanut butter and jelly anytime soon. Yes, no. Well, it isn't terrible. <laughs>